year one of uh, Kirby Smart, a lot of uh, excitement as we saw with Georgia, 93,000 at the spring game, uh, set the SEC spring attendance record. What's your thoughts on Kirby Smart and the uh, and the excitement around the program right now? I, I think um, uh, I think the enthusiasm surrounding uh, Coach Smart coming in um, is it has really put the program in, in a position here where uh, the, the optimism surrounding you know not only next year but uh, but I, I think the future of the of the program is at a spot right now at an all time high. If you think back you know, to when Coach Rick came, he really ratcheted up the program and took it to another level. And I think what we've seen from uh, from Kirby here uh, in, in a very short time period is building on a very very solid foundation that Coach Rick has already already built, and, and you, know, you can see that with the with the fan base anywhere that you go throughout the state. Uh, there, there's an immense amount of uh, optimism and interest in the program and, and, and what uh, what Coach Smart is doing. A lot of that's because there's, there's natural excitement when you have a new coach in uh, that, that comes into the program. Uh, but, but on top of that, uh, you, know, you, you, you go to a spring game and you see that uh, stadium full and you see people getting turned away at the, at the gates, not being able to get in because you're at capacity. Um, that that is uh, it's an exciting thing to see. It's an awesome thing to see, and uh, I think that's resonating. Uh, you know, when you when you get to even beyond the Bulldog Nation, that it's uh, it's turning turning quite a few heads. So uh, extremely optimistic around where the program is right now. Uh, of course, once you get into the season, you've got to start uh, and continue to win football games and and, and put yourself in a position. Uh, where you've got a chance to accomplish all the goals that you set out, which is winning the SEC East and winning the SEC, and then ultimately winning the winning the national championship when you're at a program like the University of Georgia. Uh, but uh, the the, uh, the initial uh, initial months here of, of Coach Smart being on board, there's no question there's a ratcheting up of uh, the excitement and optimism surrounding the program. Well, you said it, uh, building off uh, Coach Rick's uh, foundation that he's left behind, quality depth there. Of course, Georgia's always top five, top ten in recruiting nationally. Uh, so Kirby is is coming into a, a lot of talent there, and with even Jacob Eason uh, sticking with Georgia, and he looked pretty good in the spring game. Uh not only that, you bring in an offensive coordinator and, and Jim Chaney, who I think is a home run hire for, for Coach Smart for the first year. What are your thoughts on Coach Chaney uh, running the offense? Yeah, you know, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I think the coaching staff that uh, Coach Smart has, has, has put in place here is a solid coaching staff that uh, you, can, you can find anywhere across the country. And, um you know, when you look at the personnel that, that we currently have on this football team, um, I, I think it even makes more sense. Um, it, it's not a diversion from what we've done historically. Uh, so the talent and the skill set of the guys that we have on the team right now are going to fit pretty well with uh, with the, the new scheme and the new thought process coming into the program. So that's good. You look at the, the, the kind of talent that we have, uh, you know, across the state and really – uh, throughout the southeast, it, it's, it's one that can fit very well for us. Uh, in addition to that, so I, I uh, very optimistic around the coaching staff that's in place. And you know, just going back to some of the commentary that you made around uh, the, the talent that we have coming into the to the program that we've had come into the program, um, no question that has uh, historically uh, been a, a a top ten type. Uh, uh, or, or we consistently have recruiting classes in the top ten. I think one of the small changes that that, that you're seeing right now is is really getting locked in on filling positions of need with top talent. So we've always been able to attract top talent, uh, but but the slight shift now, the emphasis around getting bigger and getting stronger uh, and and filling voids either on the offensive or defensive line, which is where you win championships, right? You can be a very good program because you've got great skill guys, and, and historically we've been very good along those lines. But building depth with great talent in the trenches uh, is, um, is, a, is a focus and a priority that Coach Smart has is, is, is flat out come out and said that we, we've got to get stronger, bigger, and deeper in, in those areas. I think that's a small shift, so you can see – recruiting classes that end up in, in roughly the same place. But if we're getting deeper and stronger in positions of need, uh, 
that that's what can elevate a, a, a great program right now to one of the top uh, you know handful in the country. With you being a former uh, Georgia quarterback, what are your thoughts on uh, seeing Jacob Easton go through his first spring practice, and what what are your thoughts on him as a quarterback? Yeah, listen, I, I think that he physically is uh, is as talented as anybody that we've had on campus, and we've had we've had a number of um, uh, very talented quarterbacks come through come through the University of Georgia. But uh, you know, he fits the bill. He's he's six five, six six. Uh, he's got a strong arm. What impressed me in the in the spring game is his accuracy. Uh, he, he's got an innate ability to, to throw the football with touch when he needs to as well. And you can see that very quick. Fundamentally, very very sound. Uh, so uh, every physical trait that you you could want. Uh, extremely impressed with. Like everybody kind of saw that uh, uh, as he was was coming in. Didn't disappoint there. As a matter of fact, probably raised expectations. Um, uh, and I'll tell you what I was. Uh, one of the things that I was looking for is: Do you get overwhelmed by, by the moment? And typically, a spring game you wouldn't put into that, that that, that type of a scenario. Is this really going to test his his capability to, to handle a big time environment? But because we had 93,000 people there, it was like a game. Uh, it was a game game type atmosphere, and, and he wasn't overwhelmed. Uh, had control of the huddle, had control of the offense. You could see him making checks at the line of scrimmage. Still things to work on, no question about it. The, the schemes that he saw in the spring game, the schemes that he's seen uh, throughout spring, not nearly as complex as what they're going to be when you get to the to the heart of the SEC. But uh, the, those, those are things that he'll continue to learn and get better with. But physically, he's, he's an awfully talented young man. Well, last thing, what are your thoughts on the SEC East with uh... – uh, we already mentioned Georgia, and then you have uh, Florida and Tennessee. It seems like it's a three-team race this year for uh, 2016. What are your thoughts on Butch Jones uh, going into year four, and then Jim McElwain trying to trying to go back to back in the SEC East? Yeah, you know, they're starting just with with Tennessee, they, they've been um, uh, very quickly rebuilding in Tennessee, and and they they re- really reestablished themselves as as the, the powerhouse that they have. Have historically been, and, and that, that trend I expect is going to continue. Uh, they're, they're doing a great job there. It's a great program, um, and and they are uh, beginning to uh, really rebuild from a time that uh, was was tough for that program. So no question, they're going to be uh, a contender that's going to be in the mix. Uh, Florida um, uh, is is obviously there already. Tremendously talented, tremendously talented on the defensive side of the ball, and as they continue to grow and, uh, and and fill in some holes on the offensive side of the ball, um, as you would expect, and they've been in that position for a long time. They're one of the elite programs uh, in the in the country, so I, I do expect, you know, coming into the year, that it is going to be a three team uh, a three team race. But across the SEC uh, and across the SEC East, that there is uh, an awful lot of talented young men that are that are on. Uh, every single one of these teams, and wouldn't surprise me a bit if you if you see a dark horse pop up. But I I think the prevailing thought would be it's going to be one of these three football teams, whether it be Florida, Tennessee, or Georgia, that is uh, standing at the at the end. But um, uh, listen, every team is talented enough that they can step up and you may get a dark horse in there. But uh, those top three, I think it's going to be one of them.